this right here is a wax pot. Wax pot, you may ask, what is that? Um, it's a little tiny box, kind of like a jewelry box, that you put wax polish in and you keep in the shop. You know, I use wax polish on a ton of different things. And it, this is like a classic concept. Many people call it like a grease pot. Traditionally, you may have used like for tallow or something. Um, and a while ago, I was, you know, playing around and I decided to carve a couple of these boxes by hand, just for fun. There's a couple of things that I'm thinking about. I wanted to have, have a really tactile feel. Be kind of designed to scoop wax out of. And um, I want it relatively small so that you can just kind of replenish it, you know, after a while. Um, and I wanted to have like a lid where it can be shut. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it. So I figured, you know, first of all, let's just, let's try to make one. I mean, first of all, we like, we, I use a lot of wax. We make wax here in the shop and think it is such a cl classic, nice concept. And I was like, ooh, how can I make a whole bunch of these boxes in a, an efficient way? I mean, carving things by hand is fun, but really slow. Well, we have a CNC machine, right? So first of all, I needed to decide on a design. And when it comes to like, a box like this. There were a couple of things that I wanted. First of all, no additional fasteners, hardware, anything like that. I wanted there to only be the wood. And in order for that to happen, you need like a pressure fit. Or you can see here, we have a box, there's a hole, there's like a lip, and it fits into the lid. It's a rather precise situation. Now I like the CNC machine I mean, first of all, because it is very efficient, but also because you could do this with any wood. You could do this with a rather hard wood that would be tricky to do by hand. Like any tropical wood that would be hard to, to make by hand would be, you know, an ideal candidate for this. So here is the first test I did. This is oak. This is actually uh, pieces glued together. This is white oak, has a really great feel, although I didn't love the glue up concept, it was like another step. But I like the general concept, although it's been a little finicky to get just right. I'm actually thinking about putting these up for, uh, for pre-order, if anyone would be interested. Um, because I was thinking, well, we make wax polish. So we sell three different kinds of wax polish in the metal tin. These are actually has more wax, you can fit more than you can fit in there. Uh, but it's kind of a nice concept that you would, you know, maybe you get a kit, you can get a box and the wax polish tin, and you can just, you know, scoop it out and add it to it. Um, so I was thinking that would really make a, you know, like a nice Christmas gift for someone who is into woodworking and has a shop, or it would make a, a nice, Christmas gift for anybody who has a kitchen and <laughs> cutting boards and stuff and want to take care of their stuff. One of the trickiest things when it comes to cutting, especially small things on the CNC, I think is securing it down. Sometimes you can clamp right on top, at other times you need to have access to the whole top section. So you need to find a way to clamp something together by holding it like through the sides. Now, normally when it comes to securing small, one-off pieces on the CNC for cutting, I tend to use blue tape and uh, CA glue with an activator. This works really well. Basically what you do is you tape, put tape on, on, the, on the board here and you put tape here. Then you put a little activator on one side and spray a little bit on the other, put them together um, and the, it sticks really well. This is expensive. You go through a lot of this stuff. The other thing is this is really time consuming. So, I mean, if you're just cutting one thing, that's fine. This, to set this up takes about, I don't know, five minutes. Now this system here that I designed here, um, I can change out the pieces, like about five seconds, a couple seconds. It's really fast. Uh, so this is much more efficient. So what have we created here? Well, this is a jig. A jig is always the answer to, <laughs> to precision, right? So let's take a look at this jig. This here is an MDF board, and as you can see, it has various inventions cut out for different projects. I used this one for a bunch of different things. So, as long as you secure this in the right place and the machine knows where this is, it will know exactly where these spots are as well, because I set them in the program. So here I have a brand new box. I cut this project in two separate sections. I have this 
thin block of wood and then they have this thicker block of wood. So first up we have the box itself. So it fits in here. Since I'm cutting over the whole thing I need access to the entire top. What I decided to do here was to first kind of wedge this in place. And I found that instead of drilling this one in, it works a lot better if you just do it by the clamp here. Okay, so you'd think that this is a really good tight fit, right? Turns out when the bit, let's say this is the bit, when the bit comes in and it comes in at an angle and it comes in with quite a lot of force, um, it actually is enough force for it to <laughs> So um, to solve that problem, I have added two wedges on either side. So now this is really secured in place and most importantly, um, you can cut all through. Keeping it really securely in place from all directions works really well. So that is for the box part. Now, what about doing the lid? So the lid here uses the same hole, so go here. And as you can see, I don't need access to the whole top here. I only need to be able to cut on the inside. So for this situation, I've kind of made these little clamps. So this is just some thin scrap plywood pieces. Now this little clamping situation uh, really does a good job of providing a lot of, of pressure down, which is always the ideal thing when you have both you know, pressure from the sides and downwards. So this is really secured in place here. This is what it looks like when it comes off the machine. We use a quarter end mill for this pretty big bit, which is a spiral upcut bit. And that means that the shavings come out of here instead of being pushed down, which is important because you don't want to suppress things. You want to bring it out. It has this kind of little lip around. I like this design because you only need wood. There's no additional fasteners, hardware, anything like that. But what you do need on the other hand is a precise fit. So the depth in, uh, into this part, in this hole here, is one inch and I made that in 10 passes. 10 passes is quite a bit. Of course, you could go faster in a different situation, but here, I really want to make sure I didn't blow out this little lip. This is not like an inlay that, uh, where the pieces are being cut at the same time. These are two separate pieces cut at two, two separate events, which is why uh, it's a little tricky to get the position just Right, so I make this slightly bigger than it needs to be and then finish it off by hand to ensure that you get a good fit. Now the other thing to do here too is when you have this like this, the corners when you cut it on the inside are a little round. That's just the nature of cutting with a bit. And that means that the outside corners here are actually square. So in order for those, so this to fit into that, we need to round uh, these little corners attach as well. So initially this started out as a hand tool project, right? And then I was thinking, okay, how to make this less of a hand tool project and more of a machine project. Uh, turns out it's hard to go that route and you end up doing it a hand tool project in the end anyway. Of course you want to be careful because you don't want to overcut it because uh, if it becomes too big, you know, it just won't fit. It's rather slow going in terms of getting it just right. Now this right here is my mini workbench that I made uh, a couple years ago now. <laughs> Six years ago. <laughs> um, and this is coming in handy. I like this one because it raises the, the work up a little bit, so you're not standing down there. Plus you can position it wherever you need on the bench. Two benches going at the same time. So steps here in getting this to fit. We got chisel. Um, another thing that I think is, works kind of nice is to use a file. Because when you, you do a file like this, you can get some nice even pressure too. 
The other thing that's nice about this is you have a nice surface here, still kind of playing with the design here, uh, but you have a surface for the lid where you can engrave something. So right here it says Darby Norver now. You think, okay, this is gonna be like really quick. I'm gonna be able to batch these out super fast. I have a CNC machine, but then you realize that it, if you want to get the result that you want, um, there's a lot of kind of finishing work associated to it after the fact. I'm gonna put uh, 20 of these up for pre-sale as an initial offering to see how that goes, to see if there's any interest in this at all. I'll put a link in the description. Yeah, I'm gonna sell it as one box and one tin. There will be wax in both, or this will be filled with wax, and then this will be you know, extra to replenish once you use this up.